So we've got our Inmotion V11 here, and we're going to do an upgrade to a Shinko 14 inch tyre, the 2.715, and we've got all our tools ready. So, first thing we're going to do, take off the sides, we're going to take the pedals off, take the sides off, slide these out, slide that out, get this tyre off. This tyre's been great, and then I've got to do a bit of repair on this one because I've uh, actually damaged by using thread lock but I'll show you the steps so the first step is two bolts here and then there's two bolts here and then we can push from the rear and then this thing will start sliding up there we go and that just slides out now we've got to repeat that for this side and on the other side I've already done these bolts but I haven't done these two and while I'm at it I'm going to release the air out of the top and bottom chambers. So I've released the air from the top and the lower canisters and I've just undone the four bolts and now the pedal comes off. You have to take the pedal off because this bump stop impedes on this upper arm coming off and you can just see inside here just there. It, it's the uh, stop limiter. So now I've got to flip it over and do exactly the same. Once the pedals and legs are off, we can undo the washer caps that sit on the top and bottom. And then once they're off, we can pull out the cable here. And then we can pull this out. Tape the cable hole up and now we can just remove the frame. Next stage is undo the top housing and I want to be on the other side where I can see the motor mounts. Uh, the top motherboard there's four screws, then there's the two silver screws here, two black screws here, four silvers, four large black, two small black at the base. The wheel hub on this side I'm going to leave them on but on the other side I'll undo the hub but I'll leave all this frame attached. I've got to undo the screws that are sitting underneath my foam on both sides so I can lift this housing off here or actually it might be alright so I can pop this out once I got this off. So let me just pack up these screws and see what it looks like. Once the board housing's off got to separate the cable ties, disconnect the batteries and then undo all the power connectors and the four screws on top to separate the top motherboard. I'll show you what that looks like after. Power connectors are off and then all four board connectors are off and now we can undo the screws on the board. It is very cramped underneath this board so we should be very careful when reassembling. As I showed us a little bit earlier, people normally turn it on and off to flatten the capacitors. Once that top control board is off, we're left with this underneath. The blue, the green, and the yellow motor cables, and they run across the top here. So we'll undo them. And then they run down the side here, down the side, and then into the motor. So let's get those disconnected and lift it out. So now we've got the yellow, green, and the blue cable off. There is actually one cable that runs around and plugs into here. So we've got to separate that. And now our motor cables can lift up and out as they separate from everything. Um, I've got to get this shroud off, but this shroud is underneath here. And there's a couple of screws in there, I can just see. So I've got to undo the screws that run around. It shows the battery compartment, very secure. Now we can get to this screw here and then this will come out. So we can undo that. Now this housing's out, I can lift this up, lift up this cable. It just pops up pretty easily, nice and secure. Same as in here, it's just got two tabs. That just pops up. Cool, that's out. And that's out to there. So I'm going to deflate the tyre now and then flip it over and undo the two, I mean the four engine bolt, the four mounts that are fully deflated. 
I've flipped it over so the motor cable is on the underside and I am now undoing the four engine bolts, I mean wheel hub mounts and then I'll flip it back the other side and we can split the case apart and wedge it out. So I flipped the unit back over again so we're on the motor cable side. The four motor hub mounts are still attached to the hub but on the other side it's not so the other side will slide out and then this side is going to separate, is going to come with the aluminium mount at the bottom and what we need to do is we need to split the casings apart. You're going to split it quite hard and then and then you can drag the motor out. While I'm doing that, just going to be careful of this part here. Once we've pulled it out a little bit, we can then slide that out a little bit like this. And then we can continue dragging the wheel out. There we go, it's coming. Ooh, almost all the way. Let's hope this camera doesn't fall as I do this. And that is how you get your motor. So as you can see here, well, there's the clip that clips in here underneath that little part there. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Let's go for a look inside. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. See what condition they're in. And give it a clean. Ooh, it does look a bit bigger. We'll put it on and see what it looks like. The hub is very dirty, so we'll just give this a good clean. It's filthy. The bearing seems to be holding up really good. I don't really want to open it to re-grease it because that seal is very good. I am not confident that this tire is going to fit from the size of things. It just looks a bit too big. But nevertheless, we'll pop it off and see what it looks like. Got the hub and motor off. Got the tube out. Got the original tire off. Some good 240 millimeter tire levers make it very easy. Let's physically compare these tires now. Like they do look pretty good, but it's definitely just a bit bigger on the edges. Look at that, there's no way that's gonna fit. No way. It does look very badass this tire. Just using our tire levers. wedge this thing in. Putting. I can see the red light. Just small bites. good that does look good so we got the tire on it does look very mean it is almost rubbing I think once I put air in it it's just not gonna fit like these nobules are so good and grippy but it's just a little bit too big this tire just needs to be I don't know 5% smaller and I think it will but we'll pump some air in it and we'll see so I dropped in two bolts it does spin. Had to remove the back kickstand because it protruded. Um, I've flattened the wheel at the moment, so it's flat again. I do have a few issues with how the tire sits on the rim, like it bulges in and out a bit. But I'm going to put some more air in it and I might pop off every single one of these knobs just to see what it sounds like because if you listen carefully you can hear it so yeah it is very tight fit worst case scenario I'll just have to shave this somehow I don't know how we're gonna do that or what we're gonna do but it does fit and I'm gonna leave it on and definitely test it so we're cutting off the little knobs because 
as we spin I can hear it's rubbing a bit and I just want to be sure so I've cut off all the bottom ones apart from a block of four here so I'm gonna have a block of four here and then everything else is gonna be smooth oh give us a few more minutes so got this new tire on it just pumped up the suspension it's gonna be painful oh yeah Feels alright. Rubbing a little bit on those four. Let's put the sides on it and have another shot. It's got no back stand because it rubs. That tyre is extremely close. I love it. It looks insanely good, eh? Don't you reckon it looks good? Works. <laughs> 